I mean, I, I personally am looking for um, this sort of honest, authentic voice that grabs me right off the bat. No, I mean, I think it's also valuable to just, to, if you're a writer or an aspiring writer, I think it's valuable to go ahead and start thinking about, you know, literary journals or magazines you would like to submit to, and then go ahead and submit. I mean, um, develop a thick skin right off the bat. You know? Well, the Oxford American is one of the most prestigious magazines really in the country, and certainly uh, it is the magazine for um, Southern literary culture. We have a, n a growing body of creative writing students, and one of the difficulties creative writing students have is knowing how to get into the field. Um, they can write creatively. We have excellent instruction in the department, but how do you get a job with a, with a major literary magazine? One of the reasons we did this is to invite, again, both the publisher and managing editor here to talk a little bit in very practical ways about how you do get involved, uh, what you do do, and so forth, um, because their students don't know that. I've, probably, I've spent a good deal fact-checking in my, in my uh, life. One thing I always thought that was really interesting about it is it's sort of like x-raying a story. So if you, um, you get a story from a really, really an author you love, um, you're kind of like, you see how, you, okay, you get the big narrative and you see the story, but then fact-checking it, you see it from the reverse and how they put that narrative together. Everyone you're does. a student. How do you get involved at the ground floor in a very prestigious magazine like the Oxford American? And she could say they're internships and you need to apply for internships or there are other forms uh, of, of hiring that they do. Um, fact checkers, for instance. I mean, how many of our English majors really think of fact checking as being a job? But, you know, publications need fact checkers. And so that's how you get into the field. Before you apply for an internship or a job, um, or even submitting a manuscript, know the publication. The cover letter is certainly the first thing we look at. And um, you're expressing yourself. I mean, do you, are, you, are you clear? Are you... Um, engaging. It either draws us in or it pushes us away. So I would work really hard on your cover letters. Books are one thing and newspapers are another thing, but you know there's a certain type of journalism or a certain type of literary writing that really has its place in a magazine. And as far as you know magazines go as we understand the word, the future of it may still be in print. I mean despite all the technology that's available and everything that we're going in. There's a reason why this still has value to people who want to read the kind of content that's here. We are, as an English department, a very active English department. We, as you may know, we have the Cooper Honors Program here. That allows us to bring two to four, really three or four speakers in, nationally, internationally recognized speakers each year. We've had some very, very famous figures here, and so it, it opens uh, the uh, English major up to the students. They can see what professionals are doing, and I think that's particularly helpful for our students. One of the magazines that's doing the best these days right now is The Economist, um, and I think there are a lot of reasons for that, but, you know, again, you know, it's sort of, it's all those things that we've talked about. It's a reliable brand that appeals to an elite audience that covers, you know, a particular subject and provides analysis, and, um, you know, it's those kind of publications that I think are going to survive going forward. I mean, it's really, really fun. If you're the kind of person who likes um, to learn about a lot of different aspects of something and to just see how things are put together from start to finish, you know, it's, it's really fun, especially at our magazine. I mean, I worked in New York for almost 15 years in publishing, book publishing, magazine publishing, uh, literary agency, and um, it was only when I came down to the Oxford American that I finally had the dream publishing job. I'd been waiting for my whole life.